guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel and I'm here with another twin pregnancy uh, video. So today I wanted to do a five things that make it more likely that you will have twins. These are things that um, are actually research that a little more likely to have twins if these are a factor. There's actually quite a few, but I think these are the most prominent ones that I came across and I wanted to share them with you. Um, so to start, I never thought I was at risk for having twins. That sounds like risk, like a disease. I'm just saying I never thought that I would be sitting here making a twin pregnancy series. Twins weren't something that I even knew existed in our family. So it really never crossed my mind till we actually found out. Um, if you like this type of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss anything else in our twin pregnancy series and of course leave me a comment below if any of these signs are something that or any of these factors are something that you have like two or three of or if you've ever been worried like or hopeful maybe that you would have twins in your pregnancy. So the first thing is being over 35. This uh, was a factor that most uh, research has said uh, being having multiples happens more often when you are of a more mature age. I love that word, a mature age. I think they're calling me old. I'm not 35 yet, but I am over 30. And so um, I really didn't think that this even applied to me. Um, but being over 35, there is a higher uh, incidence of having multiples. Your heritage plays a little bit of a part and making you more likely to have twins. Um, there are the highest number of twins occurring in people of African-American descent. I'm half uh, African-American, and so um, I'm very, uh, I wasn't really like, oh, that's gonna be a huge factor for me, so like, don't worry about it. Um, actually, the African-American descent is the number one, followed by Caucasian, and the lowest um, occurrences of multiples, twins, uh, triplets, or quadruplets in any other cultures are, or any other um, ethnic backgrounds are, I think the lowest are Asian and Lat, uh, Latino populations. I think they have the least um, occurrences of multiples uh, in pregnancy. So while African American was the highest, I again, I'm only half, and so I was like, well, you know, like, is that, is that even going to affect me? Third thing that I had read was there was a study that showed women who ate more dairy uh, were more likely to have twins. And this could be for several reasons. I think one of them mentioned was they thought there was a possible uh, correlation with the hormones given to animals who produce the milk for dairy or the naturally occurring hormone in dairy. I'm not sure which it is. But either way, I read it on several um, research sites that um, there was a tiny bit of correlation. And again, these are not causation. This is just correlation. One thing is happening while well, another thing is also happening, could be tied together, was women who eat a lot of dairy. I am a cheese fanatic. If you were to say, after dinner, what would you like for dessert, and you offered me a block of cheese, I would definitely take that over anything else. Um, cheese is just my jam. I love it. I love authentic cheesecake. I like cheese dip. I like cheese in every form. Shamefully enough, I, as a child, when I had allowance money, would go buy canned cheese and eat it, um, like the cheese whiz. Uh, I have considered it several times in this pregnancy, but still have yet to do it. Um, so there's still time though, people, there's still time. Maybe I will get myself a can of cheese. Anyways, when I found out this statistic, I was like, well, okay, that's one thing for me where maybe it would affect me for the amount of cheese that I do eat. I also am very, uh, I use meat in my diet, like as a, as people say, condom meat, like it's a side not the main men like main piece and so um that leads me to eat a little bit more dairy uh, greek yogurt for protein i love greek yogurt uh, i have that almost every single day 
I don't drink milk because milk does not agree with me. And again, that's something I think I would have assumed that uh, with dairy, I think it's women who eat a lot of dairy, not just cheese. Um, I would have thought, well, there's people who, who eat a t who drink a ton of milk and I don't drink milk, I, I drink almond milk. So potentially that wouldn't affect me either. Another factor is women who are taller. And I don't know if this is just because your body like has more torso space. Like I have a really, really, really short torso. So carrying these twins has not been uh, the most comfortable as they have gotten really big. Um, but I know that there are higher occurrences of twins for people who are taller. I am not super tall, actually just under or the average of height for women. So I didn't think that this applied to me either. So again, no worries there. But the fifth factor that um, makes you more likely to have twins is if you have paternal twins that run on either side of your family. Uh, this is something that I learned after we found out we were having twins, that both of our grandparents had twins siblings or in their family or had siblings who had twins. So uh, my grandmother's brothers were twins. Um, there were another set of twins on my side and my husband's side has two sets of twins. By the way, they were all twin boys which we are having twin boys. And some people ask like, how can it run on your dad and your mom's side? Well, it makes sense on your mom's side because they're passing down uh, the genetics to you and they're in charge of your, they would be passing down the fertility genetics. But there is something called hyperovulation. And this is when you produce more or drop more than one egg per ovulation cycle. And it's a, it is a gene that you can carry. If a male has a, a mother with this gene, they can actually, I think that they can carry this gene and pass it on to their daughters, which is why sometimes people say that twins can skip a generation if the generation is the male passing that hyperovulation gene down to their daughter. We still don't know if the twins are 100% sure fraternal or identical. Uh, identical twins means that it's just spontaneous. There's actually no factors that really uh, increase the likelihood of identical twins except one that I read about and they, I don't know if this is still being looked into or not, but I know with the use of fertility drugs, sometimes when embryos are being, um, I don't wanna say cultured, but when they're growing outside of the body before they put them back in, um, something about what they're growing in can uh, make them more likely to split and get identical twins. And again, I just read that like on a, fertil a fertility site that I was on, so um, I don't know how true that is, but it was kind of a cool, it was kind of cool. I was like, oh, well, that's kind of neat to know. But with fraternal, there are actually, there is actually a gene you can pass down. And so I'm gonna guess if I had to take a wild, uh, a wild stab at it is that uh, my family has a hyperovulation gene and it was passed down to me and I was able to uh, be blessed with twin boys um, if they are fraternal. Again, they are more likely to be fraternal, but there is still a slight chance that they could be identical. We will find out when the twins get delivered. We will be getting a little cheek swab and then we will know um, if their DNA is a 100% match or 99.9% .9 match or not and then we'll know if our boys are fraternal. The other way is if they look nothing like me or my husband or each of them looks like one of um, each of us. So my husband was blonde haired, uh, has green eyes, I have brown hair and I have brown eyes. So um, there's a possibility though that because both of my parents, uh, one of my parents looks like me, one of my parents has green eyes and blonde hair and both of his parents do, using the old biology table of um, genetics, uh, there is a 50-50 chance that they could have brown or blonde hair and the 50-50 chance of them having green or brown eyes. And so um, it's really exciting because they may come out and look nothing alike. Uh, one may, or they might both look alike and look more like one parent than the other. But if they come out looking nothing alike, we'll definitely know that they're fraternal. If they come out looking a little bit similar, we will still be swabbing them just to make sure 
I don't want to mix up babies, even paternal babies, um, even siblings who are a couple years apart in baby photos can look super, super close, like almost like twins. If they had been born around the same time, uh, it would have been hard to distinguish them from one another. So definitely don't want to mix up our babies. That's the five things that I've most commonly came across that said, uh, these are some factors that can make you more, uh, more likely to have twins in a pregnancy. I hope you guys liked the video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. We'll be doing a couple more in our twin series in my third trimester before the babies get here. So I want to pack in a couple more videos and really just share the rest of my twin pregnancy with you uh, and let you know how it's going and some other fun facts that I find out along the way. Thanks for joining in guys. Bye.